No, you, no, I want you to understand. Relaunching is necessary, but nobody told you it would be easy. Let me say that again. Relaunching is necessary, but nobody told you it would be easy. It's required, but it's not easy. Why? I got an enemy called stagnation. Good God. That wants to keep me in the same place, doing the same thing, thinking the same way. And the truth is, is that many of us have become very friendly with our enemy called stagnation. You didn't invite them to men. You didn't made them comfortable. You didn't gave them a seat at the table. And then you're wondering why you can't progress past your previous because you keep hanging around with your past. God. You keep talking about new beginnings and new days and starting over and, and being refreshed and being restored. And you got all the biblical cliches. You know how to throw your hands up and to shake your head. You know how to speak in the tongue and when to fall out. But the truth is, in the inward parts, you're dead. Still stuck in the same place. Still dealing with the same thing. Still believe in the same lie. How long? How long will you stay in the wrong place calling it right? Somebody declare one more time. Say, relaunch me, Lord. Let's go, Ty. So when you look at the word relaunch, it means to launch something, especially a product, again or in a different form to produce it in a different way and here's the beautiful thing about this personally and as a ministry God didn't stop us from doing us tell us to stop doing what we were doing God has shown us a better way of doing what we've been called to do amen somebody listen God is not telling you to stop living life he's not telling you to stop enjoying life he's not telling you to stop being saved, sanctified, and filled with your Holy Spirit. He's not telling you to stop being, having your Pentecostal moments in life. What God is telling you is that there is a better way to do this. But in order to experience it, you got to be willing to lose. You got to be willing to lose where you are, what you have, what seems to be your substantiation, your peace. Because the only way you get more is being willing to give up where you are and what you have. And most of us, watch this, most of us who talk about being wealthy and talk about being prosperous, as a matter of fact, we still stuck on fake it till you make it. That's why you drive cars that you really can't afford. Live in houses that, watch this, that, that you keep saying that are blessings, but they're really more of a burden than it is a blessing. It's hard to enjoy your house and you complain it about it every day of the. And stuff has become our God. Woo. And we have such a fear of losing stuff because stuff has defined us. They've made us significant. And men struggle even more than women. And African-American men even more than our counterparts. Because stuff says that we've arrived. Stuff says that we've reached certain plateaus in life. Stuff says that I'm successful. Good God Almighty. And the truth is, if you're no more successful than the things you have, you really... The Bible tells us that everything we see that's carnal, it will pass away. That at some point in time, your stuff is going to be irrelevant. I, I, I'm not sure because I'm not died and going to heaven. But I don't think they take a stuff count once you get to the door. I don't think there's an inventory of how much stuff you have. I don't think that determines what part of heaven you get to live in. But we read the Bible, we study the Word of God from such a Western perspective where things give you significance that we read the Bible and we interpret how significant of the Bible based upon things. And you got to understand things mean nothing to God. That God values your soul. He values your relationship. 
Things are just benefit from being in a proper relationship. Ooh, Facebook that. Because I'm in a good relationship with my wife, I get some good things. We won't go into details, but there are benefits. <laughs> And what I love about it is that the benefit that I get is not made available to everybody. So back up. And God wants to be in a relationship with you that, watch this, that benefits you, that prospers you. And he doesn't, he doesn't condemn things. He just doesn't want things to become our God. Amen. Amen. So we're relaunching because we understood that we were doing some things that were unnecessary, some things that we needed to leave behind. T.D. Jake says it this way. He says that you may need to restructure, relaunch some things, but when it's over, you'll step into the next dimension. All of us talk about it. I want to get to the next level. I want to get to the next dimension. My question to you today, please write it down. Make note of it. What are you willing to do to get where you want to be? Good, we got quiet. So here's the thought. How do we really relaunch? We've been talking about this for the past three weeks, and the question has been, how do we relaunch? Well, what we found is that, that we, we kind of, I guess, compared this to pretty much a track meet. A track meet. And, and, and because I like sprinting. I like sprinters. I, I don't like that long stuff. When you got to run around, that's too long. But sprinting is exciting. I, I like sprinters because, really, I like sprinters because they look like athletes. They, I'm not saying that the other people that run long distance aren't. I say sprinters look like athletes. Most sprinters are, are muscular built, and they look like, you know. So, so I, 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 I like that because that's how I look. Yeah, <laughs> don't let this jacket fool you. Uh. <laughs> you might as well laugh. So watch. We said that there were three, 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 three strategies to relaunching. Watch. We said the first, that you had to get on your mark. When, when a sprinter is called to a race, when the sprinter is called to the race, I, I like it because before the race start, you know, they all standing back there and they warming up and they stretching and they get ready. Uh, but as soon as... As the guy says, on your mark, all of that changes. And they get into a proper position that identifies that they're in a race. I told you before, and I can't preach it, but you can go out on, on, on the website at www.your3c.com and click on 3C TV and you can catch all of our teachings. That many of us miss this because we're simply not in our proper position. You cannot run the race. You can't. They, they don't even know you're in the race unless you first get what? Get in the proper position. So they say on your mark, everybody lines up. The next command is what? Get set. Get set says that they call you into intense focus on what's about to happen. The third command is go. Go means of what? Let's go fulfill the task. Let's run this race. It doesn't matter about anybody on my right or my left. I, I'm not focusing on them. I'm not even giving them consideration. See, because the problem with many of us is we get distracted at focus, at get set, and it runs. Watch this. We carry that same distraction throughout go. We get so caught up on what the person on the right is doing or what the person on the left. You stop and start looking at their outfit. But just some nice track shoes. And they're really thinking about blowing you off the lane. It, because once you get set, the only thing I'm focusing on is my release, my go. And, and when I get to go, I know now is that it's time to execute. It's time to put all the training. It's, it's time to put all the study in. It's time to put all the work uh, uh, in motion. And it's time to make something happen. Tell somebody, let's go. Listen, we've been training, we've been working, we've been prepared. We, we did not get here lightly. You got to understand that the one thing I love about the Olympics is that nobody goes to the Olympics unless they're first qualified. You got to qualify to go. And some of you are trying to run races that you've not yet been 
Oh, boy, but see, 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 my qualification, I can prove my qualifications. Uh, you can do some background search and see my qualifications. For anything that you're trying to do, you got to make sure you qualify. Uh, I know, I know, I know y'all real spiritual. God, Holy Spirit is teaching me all things. He qualifying me. Yeah, yeah, and, and I ain't going to argue with you. Holy Spirit is a teacher, but you got to know he's going to use a man to coach you to where he's calling you to. And, and you struggle to submit yourself to someone else's authority, and you end up in a position with broken focus and then wonder why you fumble along the way. See, because I wanted, watch this, because I wanted to be better, I sought out better. Are, are, you, are you feeling me? And when I got introduced to better, I submitted myself to better. Why? Because at the end of the day, I didn't want to stay the same. I wanted to launch into something that was bigger and better than I was previously doing. If I wanted to stay the same, I would have never asked them to show me how to be. So glad to see my friend Jim is in the house because, because watch this, simply because, and I'm just flowing, simply because we wanted to be better. We wanted to be a better ministry. We wanted to be prepared for hundreds or thousands or whatever it is that God had ordained us to serve. So we stopped doing what we were doing because it was not working. Come on, man, I'm helping you here. You better look at your life and determine what is not working. And when God shows, why are you praying, asking God, show me what's broke? As soon as he revealed it to you, you don't want to let it go because you like it more than it likes you. Come on, man. You didn't marry to yourself to something that is not working. And then you're stubborn, too stubborn to let it go. Then wondering why you still broke and fractured in that area of your life. Let it go. And there are so many things that don't, watch this, that you keep saying have you that really don't have you, you holding on to it. How long you going to keep telling me about your daddy? That he won't in your life. That he didn't do what he was supposed to do. You think you're the first one? You ain't the first and I guarantee you, you will not be the that, Watch this, that only works for, for so long. When I got 40 years old and I figured out I was acting like a monkey flip fool, it was no longer my daddy's fault. No, no, I was a 40-year-old man. It wasn't my daddy's fault that I was still acting like a little boy. All those decisions weren't on him. They were on me. Paul said I was still thinking like a child. That's why I was producing like a... But when I became a man, I put away... And the thing is, if you a man, stop praying with doll babies. Sooner or later, you got to put G.I. Joe away because life got the, come on. I got tired of making the same bad decision over and over. Are y'all all right? I said, are you all right? I got tired, Dave. I got tired of making the same decision over and over and over. Coming home, praying the same prayer, Lord, forgive me for what I just did. And it's not like God wouldn't forgive me, but at some point he expected me to mature and grow past it. And can I help you? God did not come down from heaven. He did not send Jesus, <laughs> nor the, oh, stop playing in church. God gave me the ability to become. Are y'all with me? So uh, he had already given me the power and authority to overcome my habits, to become more than what I'd previously been. So he won't come down and do it for, oh, man. Jesus said, it is if it's finished, then what else is left to do? The rest is on. Come on here, man. The rest is on. Come on here. The rest is on. You still waiting for heaven to come down and fix your problems. I'm just waiting on the Lord. Wait, the word waiting has more than one definition. 
One of the definitions of waiting means to serve. So if you're really waiting on the Lord, get to serving. Come on, man. get to serve. There's a benefit. There's an increase in, come on, there's a breakthrough in your. Tired of being poor, learn how to serve at the next level. It brings a, di- oh God, it brings a different reward with it. Come on here, man. I guarantee you, the manager of McDonald's don't make the same money as the dude that's taking your order. Both of them got on uniforms, but common, they ain't getting paid the same. Are y'all all right? So watch, man, sooner or later, you got to get to the point that you're going, that you're moving. The word go has so many definitions, I couldn't even get them all in there. I was like, this is a two-letter word, and it had, I think it, I, I stopped reading, it had over 30 definitions to a two-letter word. It's one of the word, first words you learn how to spell, you excited about it. Spell go, G-O, and you feel good about that thing. I can spell go. And that's the extent of it, but where it says to move on a course to take certain course or to follow certain procedures, to apply oneself what? To apply oneself what? You cannot go without applying your... Are y'all, are y'all looking at me right mean. This is supposed to be good preaching. Look, to put or to subject oneself. I love this one in red comment. It says, to proceed without delay. And many of y'all get stuck at the line. You, you didn't got in position. You got your focus. You all looking like a runner. And they say go. And then you start asking questions. Well, where we going? How, how long is it going to take to get there? Well, who else going? You, don't you hate, man, you get in the car with the kids? And you trying to get them somewhere? You trying to bless them? Where, where, where we going? Zion make me so mad, I just be like, forget it. Zion, come on, let's go, man. We go, Papa, where we going? But just get in the car, man. I got some. But, 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 but where we going? See, get in the car. Put your seat belt on, man. I got. But, 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 where we? How long we gonna be there? Well, well, well is, is any my is it my cousins coming? You know what? Never mind. Never, no, never mind. And God gives you permission to run without delay. And then you keep asking him the same question. Well, 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 well God, where we going? Well, well, well who else going to be there? Look, I love all y'all, but I guarantee you I ain't asking God is y'all going to heaven. Or like I ain't coming because you ain't. We say Raymond ain't coming. Well, shoot, send me to hell. I'm going with Ray. I love Ray the light, but if Ray go to hell, to hell with Ray. I'm not going to hell. I don't like him that much. I be texting Ray like, Ray, having a ball in heaven. How's it going in hell? Seeing. Waiting. Ray, pastor, can't talk, no service. (laughs) <laughs> it's just hot ass I told y'all y'all better stop playing the church man look so we gotta run when, we, when, when God calls us when he puts us in the proper position when, when he submitted and committed us run what I love about what I love about what I love about being an athlete man I love playing football but one of the most exciting things about playing football is, is, is of course it's game day but it's when you fall up under good coaching Ain't nothing like a good coach. A good coach will recognize, watch this, they'll recognize your talent. They'll recognize your skill set. But they also will recognize your weakness. And while you'll want them to spend more time complimenting your your greatness, if they're a really good coach, the intense time they spend with you will be dealing with the area that you don't want to discuss. Because I wanted to be better, because I wanted to be a better pastor, I wanted us to have a better ministry. I, I, I sat up under tutelage of my friend back there, Jim. Y'all give it up for Jim. That's my man. That is my man. I love that dude to life, man. 
And when I, when I came, I understood that, watch this, I understood I didn't know more than him. And because I wanted to get better, I had, I had to submit myself to his authority. Now watch this, I was like the centurion. It never diminished who I was, for I was a man in authority, yet under authority. And for all of y'all that struggle with being under somebody, you will never rise above if you can't first be under. Let, let me say that again. For all you that's struggling, thinking that you all that, you will never rise above if you can't first be under. So I learned how to listen. What'd I say? I learned how to listen. I learned how to shut up and, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was setting sessions and, and he would be going on and there, there would be times that I wanted to interject, but then my, thank God for Holy Spirit would say, well, what you know? I'm waiting. No, no, what you know about, watch this, where, where, what do you know about the destination that you declare that you want to arrive to? He pastored a 5,000 uh, person church, right? Somewhere around there, three, 5,000. See? Look, he all nonchalant with it. Yeah. He, 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 he's worked with budgets of multiple hundreds, thousands, maybe some millions in there. Yeah. He, he, he dealt with multiple locations and campuses and a staff under him, a paid staff under him. So now what was my input? Whoa, 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 watch, watch. On our good day. So now what really was I going to interject in the conversation? I'm just trying to help you because sometimes you need to learn how to shut up and... No, I ain't say it nice. I did not say be quiet. Sometimes we don't understand be quiet. You need to do like my mama said and shut up. My mama said shut up and sit down some... Because if you're not at that level, watch, if you're not at that level, how do you teach that level? So I submitted to myself to a wisdom that was greater than me. Why? Because I wanted to be better. I'm trying to help you learn how to relaunch. Sometimes you need some coaching that ensures that you, watch this, that the best of you comes out. And the best of you is not in your strength. The best of you is in your weakness. Man, Holy Spirit, we just flowing up in here. Watch, watch the best of me. When, 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 when I wanted to, when I wanted to, went to college, they had a big board. We had a big board. And the boards were for our bench pressing, our deadlifts, and our squats. Now, you couldn't get on the board if you couldn't bench press 300 pounds. And when, and, and, and when, I, when I got to my sophomore year, I benched 295. They didn't have a 295 board. No, you did, it did not. Watch this. It's like it never happened. It didn't count at 295. Some of y'all have stopped at 295 and been happy. So I kept wondering, comments that kept trying to push me to get to 300. I couldn't get past my sticking point. Oh, God. I couldn't get past my sticking point at 300. It was a point from the breaking of my chest because in the bench, you couldn't bounce it. You had to take the weight, control, tap your chest, and come up. I could bench 300 pounds from here to here. That didn't count. But when I tapped my chest, I always got caught right here. So I found out that it wasn't, it, it wasn't my chest strength. It was some surrounding muscles that were weak. So they stopped focusing on me just simply benching because all I would do is go in. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. That didn't work. But when they started building my delts and my triceps, the supporting muscles, when I dealt with my weakness, it gave me, watch this, it increased my strength in the area that I was already strong. So the more I worked on my delts, the more I worked on my triceps, the, the greater my bench got. And when we finally went back to max out day, I blew past the 300, and now I was on the big boy board at 315. Feeling good about myself. But I kept working because they had a 350 board. And I just felt that it would be pretty good to weigh 205, 210, and bench 350. So all summer long, I had a plan laid out. I said I had a plan laid out. I had envisioned myself. I had a clearly defined picture with a preferred outcome of me benching 350. I submitted myself to the workout plan that they gave me when I came back to school. 
<laughs> Cold. Yes, sir. Three fifty. See, waiting for the three fifty. Now today I can say I bitch three fifty. Today I'm not getting under two hundred because it's just not. I'm trying to help you relaunch. So come on, let's, come on, man, look. Um, Corinthians tells us this. It's my time about up. Corinthians says, 924, do, not, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the what? Run in such a way as to win the, hey, if you in this game, if you in this life, if, if this is what you're about, if this is what you're striving for, do it to win the prize. That means when I'm going, I'm going all out. I'm going hard. Second place is nice, but I prefer. Notice the money is different at first place and they might both get a check, but know that the money is so if I'm going, I want to win the prize. Everyone who competes in the game goes into a what? Strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Come on. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. I do not strike a blow to my body. Uh, no, I strike a blow to my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself may not be disqualified for the prize. Paul says everything we do, we do it out of a vision. We do it with expectation. We do it, I mean, highly defined. When, when I got that definition, man, that thing has never left me. A highly defined picture with a preferred outcome. I dream in HD for now, oh, man. Come on, man. Ain't there, there's no more than blurred lines, Cole. I, I, I dream on purpose, with purpose, with intent. I know what it looks like. So I want to give you three strategies, and then we're out of here. Come on, Ty, let's get down. Three strategies. I want to give you three strategies, three strategies. Take me down to what? Yeah, here we go. Three strategies to run and to be successful. Amen? Y'all ready? You're going to have to run from. You're going to have to learn how to run to. You're going to have to learn how to run with. Real simple. You're going to have to learn how to run from. You have to learn how to run to, and you have to learn how to run with. Y'all got it? Run what? Number one, run where? Number two, number three. Got it. First thing you're going to have to do if you're going to relaunch and you're going to be better, you're going to be successful, is you're going to have to run from comparisons. One of the most dangerous things we do, and we spend hours doing it, is comparing ourselves to others. You are not anyone else. To compare yourself to them is aimless and a waste of good time. Now watch this. To be comparative where I'm looking, watch, where I'm looking at how they're doing something, studying it to figure out how, what elements of that fit into what I'm doing to make it better is one thing. But to look at them and want to be them says that God didn't know what he was doing when he made you who he made you to be. It, it, watch this. You got you to gotta understand how devastating that is because in the face of God, you're rejecting the gift that he called you to be, and then you're desirous, you're envious of another person's. You want to take what they have instead of working your work to become what God says you can be. And, and then the real sad thing about it is that you don't even know it's in you is greater than what they've accomplished because you won't take time to find out what's in Comparisons are easy to sit up and say, and watch, watch, if we do it on the low, if I had that, I could do that. If you had that, you'd make a mess of it. 
if you've not watched, if you've not studied, if you've not gone into strict training, if you're not qualified for it, if they gave it to you, what you would become is a poor reproach. You would be embarrassing to God if he gave you half the stuff that you're praying and asking for. Why? Because you've not prepared yourself for it. The Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved, a workman rightly dividing the word that, what? watch, we don't have to be shameful when we do this thing right. Romans 12 and 3 says this. It, it tells you to think more, not, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought, but think of yourself soberly. See yourself for where you are, for what you have. Watch, become content, not complacent, and then begin to build to where you want to go. Master your measure and you can live at the next level. Most of us haven't even mastered where we are, what we have, and we're praying about getting somewhere else. <laughs> we receive. Watch. Mo are y'all hearing me? Mo mo most of you can't even deal with what you already got, but you got your eyes on the next thing. And then we're constantly comparing, constantly comparing, constantly comparing. Man, it, it just, Second Cor uh, Corinthians, look, just a few scriptures. Look, is, it, is this where I want to be? That's Chronicles, Corinthians. Yeah, the uh C word, the uh C word. Anticipation. Y'all remember the Heinz ketchup commercial? Oh, we there now. Watch this. Look what Paul writes. He says, we do not dare to classify or to compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. Comparison is not wise. It proves you to be foolish. There is no way I can do what Dave does with a guitar. And there's no way Dave can look this good. There is no comparison. <laughs> I love that dude, the life, man. No, why, why? There's no comparison. I can't do what he do. Why? I'm not qualified to do what he does. I've not, I've not studied one day to play the guitar. My grandma and them bought me a guitar. That thing sat in the corner. I had a little amp and everything. It had a wah-wah on it. I, I like the wah-wah. That's all I ever learned was. It's bad when they bring you in front of the family on Christmas and say, play something. Thank you very much. So watch, you, you got to understand your gifts. You got to learn to appreciate what? Your gift. Comparing myself to someone else is foolish. Why would I compare our ministry to the Potter House? Come on, why would I expect to do through our ministry what Bishop Jakes does through the party house? No, all that does is diminish the gifts and the talents that we have here. It doesn't make us any better. It doesn't improve, and it doesn't profit us anything. Are you with me? So comparison profits, you know, profits you little. Stop comparing your marriages to other people's marriages. You didn't marry other people. You married the joker that you married. If he ain't had no teeth when you married him, you already knew that. Why are you expecting him to have teeth now? Why are you mad because he ain't got no teeth? When in all the pictures, he ain't got no teeth. And if that bothers you so much, go buy him some teeth. They pop right in. You put some of that sticky stuff around there. Good to go. It's all right. Now he got, you happy, he happy. Stop comparing, stop comparing. He is not the other person. He's not going to act like, that's why, that's why I told first lady she can't die. I'm going to act like Jesus. I'm going to raise her up. 
They're going to be trying to bury him. I'm going to be like, show me where you laid him. It's about Lazarus part two right about here, boy. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go through all I, I, She house trained. She, she, you know what I'm saying? Oh, but I am too. Oh, don't even act like it. You stay in a relationship 28 years. You will be house trained. Sit. Not a problem. Go upstairs. I thought I wanted to go anyway. <laughs> Baby, come here. You just come. You don't even ask what no more. Boo-boo. I just start moving. Get down. Then she tell me, go back. Go up there and get my pocketbook. It's 28 years. Are you, are you with me? I don't want to start all over with that. No. So I don't compare her to other people. I don't expect her to act like other people. She doesn't fit like other people. She, you know, everybody else, she don't look like your wife. She's supposed to look like your wife. She minds. She's supposed to fit right here in you. She fit right here in me. Get your own rib. Telling me my rib don't fit. She ought to look like this. She ought to act like that. No, your wife ought to look like this and act like that. I don't really like your wife. I just ain't never told you. <laughs> Trying to make my wife look like your wife, and I don't like your wife. I hate me when my wife get around your wife. Last thing you about to do is come home acting like his wife. He don't like his wife. He told me. I'm just telling you, don't get stuck comparing. Watch this. And then lose what you have. Can't benefit from what you have because you stuck on what somebody else got. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, because when, when you can be truthful and know that's where you've been for a number of years, asking God why their church growing, why this happening with them, why their grass greener, and God looking at you like, if you spend some time working on your own stuff, your church would go, your grass would be greener, your marriage would be better, your bank account would be fatter. I'm comparing your bank account and you still getting broke and they out doing what they do, making their paper, and then you think something, all right, I'm off of that. So number one says, I got to learn how to run from. Number two says what? I got to learn how to run to. Uh, listen, man, if, if I'm ever going to do this thing, I got to learn how to run towards what matters. Are you with me? You, you, you got to stop, man. You got to stop making all these excuses. And, and, and you got to be willing. I told you, when, when you want to do better, it's going to cost you something. It'll cost you some people. It'll cost you some places. It'll cost you some things. Question is, how bad do you really want what you say you want? You got to learn how to run towards some things. You got to learn how to run towards some things. Uh, where do we want to go, Ty? Hey, hey take, me to, take me to Isaiah. Let, let, yeah. Take me to Isaiah 43, 18 first. In order to run to what I say, you got to be willing to release. Are y'all with me? Come on, my time about up. In order to run to, I got to be willing to what? Say it again. In order to run to, I got to be willing to what? So if I release something, if I forgive myself of something, if I let something go, at the, at the inkling of trouble, the last thing I can do is run back to what I said I let go. Are you with me? I can't keep running back to the way that it was because I'm comfortable with that way. I got to learn that I have some stick to this that allows me to stay focused on where I'm going. Isaiah says this. He says this, 43.18 says, forget the former things. Forget it. Let it go. Relinquish it. Do not dwell on the... I don't even need no more than that. Stop dwelling on the past. You keep talking about where you're going. But every time we get into conversations, how you going to get there, you always tell me where you've been. And you can't get where you're going looking back where you've been. When you spend too much time in your past, watch, you delay yourself from arriving to where you're destined to. You have a destiny. You have a destination. It is not in your past. It's, oh God, it's in front of you, not behind you. That's why, I, you know, I, I tempered how I go to homecoming. Because Ross, every time we go to homecoming, everybody want to remind you who you was. Remember when. Some things you don't need to remember when. 
Stop taking me back. I won't go back. Look, stop taking me back. I don't want to go back. Yes, I know. I used to run around on campus, you know, but, but that ain't what I do no more. That's not who I am anymore. So stop trying to take me back to my past. I don't live there any. You got to learn how to run too. Watch what Paul says in Philippians. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Look. Paul was writing. Paul says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do is I'm forgetting what is behind me and I'm what? Straining. King James says, I'm pressing towards. If you're going to, man, if you're going to relaunch, if you're going to become greater, if you're going to do more, you got to learn how to let go of what's behind you and strain, push, press towards what's in front of you. Here's one thing I've learned and I, and I got a great understanding of, that it takes more strength to break hold of my yesterday than it does to live in my de- today. Let, let me explain it to you. There's a gravitational pull. Y'all, 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 we, y'all know about that science stuff, right? Bishop, when Cofield came, he says it takes eight seconds to break the earth atmosphere to reach out of space. But what he didn't talk about was how much energy and force it takes to break the earth's atmosphere. You are in some relationships, you are in some places, some things that are really trying to hold you captive. And what you got to understand is that it takes a great amount of force and energy to break free from your past so you can get on the path to your destination. You got to watch this. You got to work hard to leave yesterday in your yesterday because if you give it a window or a crack, it'll creep into your tomorrow. And, and, and watch, that's why God tells Joshua, and Joshua's one, uh, um, seven, what is it, six, seven, and nine, I believe it is. He tells him constantly over and over and over again, you got to be strong and very courageous. Because if you're going to break through, what it's going to take is it requires you to be very strong and very courageous. You got to be bold whenever people are telling you to be quiet. Because as much as people talk about they want to see you succeed, as the same people that's trying to hold you to where you... I'm praying for you. They just didn't tell you what they was praying. That's why I, I'm, I'm bold enough. I'm, Doc, I'm going to pray for you. No, that's okay. No, thank you. Why? I already know you don't like me. So it's not like you praying for me. You praying. Y'all all right? All right, let's get out of here. Number three says you got to learn how to do what? Run with. Run with. Listen, man, you got to know. <laughs> you got to know who with you and who's against you. I'm talking about relaunching. There's no need to relaunch and end up in the same place doing the same thing the same way. Everybody is not on your side. I, I, I grew up in, you know, 70s, 80s, man, and the OJs was out. OJs, you know, they be st- huh? They had this jank called Backstabbers. Song said they... All the time want to dim. And some of y'all done nestled up real close to some. Understand this. Your enemy can't betray you. So betrayal will never happen far from you. Betrayal will always be with the ones that position themselves closest. Oh. And I told y'all, you better learn the ministry of be quiet, shut up, whatever the correct, politically correct way it is for you. Because sometimes you simply tell things to the wrong people in the wrong season. 
Maybe Joseph never gets in all the trouble he got in if he just knew how to keep his. Moses' youngest son never ends up cursed if he didn't blab his mouth about what he saw. Some of you got people close to you that mean you no good and you think they're your greatest ally. So you keep telling them everything that the Lord is telling you and then wonder why they get your stuff before you do. Saw that thing happen one time and I was like, oh, okay. Lord said, you <laughs> loose lips sink. The looser the lips, the quicker the ship sink. All right. So watch. You got to learn how to run with. Learn how to run with God. Learn how to run with the mind of God. Learn how to run after the things of God. Matthew 6, says what? But seek ye first what? The kingdom of God is what? The mindset of God. It's the way of God. It's the methods of God. It's not a place. How do I know? Because later in Scripture he says that the kingdom of God is not here nor there, but the kingdom of God resides in you. The kingdom is the mind of God. It's why God does what he does, how God does what he does. It's what God reveals to us about his strategies and operations. Once you figure out that the Bible is not a book of things, but the Bible is a book of strategies, you'll begin to win your fights. Because I'll understand that when I go to the Word, I'm not looking for a thing. I'm looking for a strategy that gives me the advantage over my adversary that's trying to withhold things that God has already planned and designed for me. Y'all all right? So he says, seek first what? The kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Now, if you go back and you read 6 through 25, same chapter, you can figure out what the things are. So I got to learn to run with the kingdom. I got to learn to run with the kingdom. Uh, Philippians 4, 10, 13 says this. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. Come on. I am not saying this because I'm in need. For I have learned to be content wherever, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content. Ooh, somebody ought to underline that. Uh, Paul says, in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Come on. This scripture you always quote. What 13 at? Thirteen says what? Is up. Thirteen says, Well, I can do what? All things through Christ who strengthens me. So I know that I can do, I can cut watch. So what we say is we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Is that really a truth though? Mm. Or can I do the things that God's assigned to me through Christ who strengthens me? See. You, you, you got to stop taking things and try to make it work the way you want it to work and find the biblical truth that's in it. You can't do all things. You're not skilled. You're not gifted. You're not called to. You're not assigned to. But what you can learn to do is what? The thing that God has called you to do through Christ who strengthens you. Amen, somebody. So I understand the calling. I understand the anointing. I understand being committed. I understand being submitted to an authority, whether it be through another man or woman or through Holy Spirit himself that leads me to a place that gives me an ability to go and not only a go, but to arrive. And when I arrive to accomplish everything that God has assigned for my life. Amen, somebody. So what are you asking me to do, pastor? I'm asking you to go. But don't go trying to be somebody else. Don't go trying to look like somebody else. Don't go trying to sound like somebody else. Go being yourself because everyone else is already taken. So go be, watch this, go in the power and the authority that God has given to you. Go. Subject yourself. Get trained up. Be developed. Spend the time. Put in the work. Keep telling y'all, work is not a bad word. Put in the work. 
Success doesn't happen without it. Be willing to sacrifice. And when you do, I promise you, you will arrive to the places that God has ordained for you. Amen? Amen.